In the shadowy corners of our homes, where the light of day seldom reaches, there exists a place of hushed whispers and chilling secrets. It's the cryptic closet, a space where ordinary garments hang alongside the tattered robes of Spectre's past. Tonight's tale takes us into the depths of such a place, a seemingly innocuous part of the house that holds within it stories that can stir the soul and unsettle the mind just before the world fades into the realm of slumber. Our story begins with the Hamiltons, a family much like any other, with one exception. Their ancestral home came with an heirloom, a grand oak armoire that stood taller than any man and carried a weight far more profound than its wood and hinges. This was no ordinary piece of furniture. It had been in the family for generations, holding within its bowels a tapestry of tales so dark that even the bravest dared not speak of them. It was the cryptic closet, and it loomed in the corner of young Elizabeth's bedroom, a gift from her grandfather who had passed under mysterious circumstances. Elizabeth, with her chestnut hair and curious eyes, had always felt a peculiar fascination with the ancient closet. On this night, as her father, Jonathan, came to bid her good night, her voice quivered with trepidation and anticipation. Father, could you share one of the cryptic closet stories? The one's grandfather used to whisper about, Jonathan sighed, the memory of his father's stern warnings echoing in his mind. Nevertheless, he acquiesced, knowing the insatiable curiosity of his daughter could not be quelled. He began with the tale of Madeline Astor, a distant relative whose portrait hung inexplicably behind the closet's moth-eaten garments. Madeline was said to be a beauty unmatched, with a heart as cold as the silver mirror she gazed into every night. Her vanity knew no bounds and it was this very obsession that led to her downfall. One evening, as a storm raged outside, Madeline was consumed by her reflection in the closet's mirror, unable to tear herself away. When the morning came, she was nowhere to be found, save for a lone silver hairpin resting on the carpet. From then on, those who gazed too long into the closet's mirror reported seeing the fleeting image of a woman, her eyes filled with longing and despair. As Jonathan spoke, the closet seemed to stir, its doors creaking subtly, as if in response to the stirring of its secrets. Elizabeth clutched her covers tighter, eyes wide with both fear and wonder. Jonathan continued with another account, this one more recent, of his own encounter with the cryptic closet when he was but a boy. He recalled a night, much like this one when a mischievous curiosity drew him to open the closet's doors. Inside he found a world not of clothes and trinkets, but of mist and shadows where whispers danced around him, revealing secrets of the past and foretelling tragedies yet to come. He spoke of a voice that beckoned him deeper, promising knowledge and power beyond his wildest dreams, but at a price too ghastly to bear. Closing the tale with a heavy heart, Jonathan looked at young Elizabeth, her imagination undoubtedly painting vivid images of the stories she had heard. He hoped he had satisfied her curiosity without igniting a flame that could not be extinguished. The room fell silent, save for the soft patter of rain against the window pane and the distant rumble of thunder. The cryptic closet stood unmoving, its wood aged and its mysteries locked tight behind closed doors. As Jonathan rose to leave, Elizabeth asked in a voice barely above a whisper, Are the stories true, father? Jonathan paused, his hand on the door handle, and with a solemn nod he replied, All tales have roots in truth my child, but remember, they are also cautionary, we must respect the boundaries between our world and the secrets that lie beyond. With that, he turned off the light, leaving only the muted glow of the hallway to illuminate the room. As Elizabeth lay in her bed, the tales of the cryptic closet swirling in her dreams, she knew that the line between the known and the unknown was thin, a mere crack in the closet door away. And while the allure of such stories was strong, the silence of the house, the darkness of the night, and the enigma of the cryptic closet were enough to remind her that some doors are best left closed and some secrets best left untold. As our tale comes to an end, we leave the Hamiltons to their slumber, the cryptic closet standing as a sentinel to histories both grim and wondrous. Remember, dear listener, that every home has its legends, every family its tales. Be wary of the closets that seem to watch and the whispers that might follow, for in the world of mystery and dark bedtime stories, the truth can be as chilling as fiction. And with that, I bid you a night free of specters and rich with dreams. For tonight, we have opened the door to the cryptic closet.
but a crack, and for now, that is just enough. 